I gave all my dead batteries away today. Free of charge. We're going to talk about charge and electric force. First of all, let's discuss charge itself. So charge, we use the letter Q to denote charge. And what is it measured in? It's really important. You know this? It's called coulombs. Okay, these are here named after coulomb. Here, so coulombs. All right, so what is it? Well, it's a property of a material, sure. Uh, charge can be negative, for example. Charge can be a positive. Um, we're going to say it's conserved, which means it's going to be the same before and after. It'll, it'll remain constant. And now, uh, what happens if we have two positive charges, for example? So like a plus and a plus, those ones are actually going to repel each other. They don't like each other. And if we have two negative uh, charges, for example, a minus and a minus, they also repel each other. But a plus and a minus, for example, so a positive and a negative, what happens with them? They attract. So this age-old you know, expression, of opposites attract, well, in this case, yeah, it does. So like charges repel, in other words, charges that are alike each other, and opposite charges attract. So we just talked about charge in Coulomb's. Well, let's look at Coulomb's law. I like this one here from Mr. Bean. <laughs> it's like Coulomb was copying Newton because you're going to see just how similar the equation looks, right? So what is Coulomb's law? Well, uh, this is all to do with the force that's between two charges that are a distance r apart. Now these charges, if they're plus and minus, for example, a positive and a negative, then they're gonna attract, but it'll be the, the size of that force, the value of the force that's attracting. Or if they're like charges, if they're both positives or both negatives, it'll be the value of the force of repulsion. So it can be attractive or repulsive, it all depends. So let's look at the equation itself, it goes like this, F equals, and I like to write like a little subscript E, even though it doesn't say it, but I like to do that, and then it goes KQ1, Q2 over R squared. Now let's look into this, this K right here, what is that? That's actually a constant, okay, so K is some kind of constant. And in fact, we have the value for it. It's actually Coulomb's constant, so it's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per second squared. It's a little bit like in uh, gravitation, for example, we had this uh, capital G right here. So same sort of idea. So this is a constant, sure, and we actually have an equation for it as well. This is also in your data book. It goes 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So if we look at this, uh, it goes 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, where epsilon 0 is this permittivity of free space, or this, this is a property of, for example, air or a vacuum. And if you need to find that value, that's also in your data booklet, so it's just 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 coulombs per newton per meter squared. Now what are the units over here for all these different values? Well, electric force is going to be then in newtons, uh, charge is going to be in coulombs, and the distance between charges is going to be in meters. And you notice then just how similar these two actually look, right? the newtons one and coulombs. So let's do an example. We have two point charges, so that means that this one right here, Q1, and we have this other one called Q2, and they're located in a straight line. Okay, and we're supposed to draw a vector to represent the resultant force that acts on a positive particle placed at point A. So imagine now we have a little plus that we place right here, a positive particle. Now let's look carefully at these values right here. We have Q1 is positive 20 mc. m means milli, so it's millicoulombs. And Q2, however, is negative 10 millicoulombs. Now the fact that millicoulombs doesn't really matter too, too much in this case, as we're not having to calculate, but we do have to have an idea what's going to happen here. So let's maybe just focus on the first one. And remember, this particle right here is going to be a positive. Okay, this one here is going to be a positive. So uh, because it's a positive that we're placing right here, well, let's figure out what happens. So this is a positive, and this is a positive. So will they attract or repel each other? They will repel each other. That means I'm going to need to draw myself something that goes, you know, from here. You know, it goes. This one right here wants to go away. So that means the, you know, force on this one here is going to be. Now I don't know exactly how long to make it. It doesn't really matter. Let's just assume I decide this is the length to make it. So I'll call this like F1. In other words, this is the force because of Q1. Well, I also have a force because of Q2. Now think about this one. Q2 is negative. So that means, hey, on a positive charge, a negative is going to attract it. So it's going to go towards it. And think about how big to make it. Well, it's for sure, if this is a 20 and this here is 10, this is half of its value, right? So that means the vector should be about half as long. So however long I made this one, I should make this other one here shorter. So I don't know. I mean, it's hard to do it exactly, but something like, I don't know, maybe like that or so. 
like that. I'm going to call that F2. Okay, so what does this mean? That means that I have to actually add up these two vectors. There's a few ways to do it. I mean, I just like to, you know, maybe I'll even write this down. I'll say add up the vectors. And remember how we add up vectors? We add vectors by adding them head to tail. Okay, so that means I'm going to need to actually draw this in here. So let's just assume then I have this uh, F1 right here. And what I'm going to do is instead of placing them tail to tail right here, I'm going to place this F2. I'm going to like move it up to here so it's lining up. So in other words, I'm going to have this F2 something like this. It's not exact. And then when I add these two vectors up, well, what do I get? I start here, I finish here. So this must be my vector. That's my net force. So I'll call this one here F net. And there is my answer. Okay, so my net force vector is something that goes up and to the right.